Потом да. Потом да. Right. I got it. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. نو نو. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Thank you for asking me to come here to be with you tonight. It's an honor and pleasure to remember my good old days when I was at your age. But there's a big difference between you and me. When I was at your age, I did not look like you. You look far more better than myself. Far more committed, dedicated, and knowing what you want to do. And you do better than us. Definitely. When I came here in Dublin first time, it was 1992. In a very small mosque. And this was because of Bosnia problem. And that's why I'm wearing this flower today for you. This flower represents a massacre which claimed the life of 11,000 people in three days. Slaughtered, shot, whatever you call it. It's called the massacre of Srebrenica. Remember it. 9 to 11 July, you have to be there. 25th anniversary of such a massacre and genocide and ethnic cleansing. Last this year, when I was there with some volunteers from Canada, they were still finding remains of the bodies from different towns, different villages, different cities. And one of the remains of the body was found in seven different locations. Seven different locations. You can imagine that mothers and fathers are still looking for the lost one. Never again you allow a genocide or ethnic cleansing to happen to anyone, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Never ever. And this is what you will do better than us. We failed to protect them. We failed to protect them. But you prevent it happening again. You should prevent it happening again and again and again to anyone and everyone. It happened to our Jewish brothers by the Nazi. Now, no more. No more whatsoever. And you are not just beautiful faces or young, talented, media savvy or technology savvy individuals. You are future leaders. That's why I came here to talk about the future, because you are the future. I came here to talk to the change makers, and you are the change makers. I came here to talk about to talk to the peace builders, and you are the peace builders. You are the community builders. You are. You have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, you be nothing. You have to believe in the capability that has been given to you by the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave you everything. He gave you everything, but you discover what you have of talent and the ability to be able to bring peace and tranquility to humanity. Don't ever think about your degree only. Don't ever think about your family only. Don't ever think about your tribe or your city or your town only. Think about humanity. Dream big. Think big and act. And if you fail once and twice and three times and four times, five times, that make any difference. Keep trying. Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Never, never to let anyone 
to put you down or to demoralize you or to call you names or to sideline you or to marginalize you. Peace be upon you. I have no time for you. I'm proceeding because I have an aim and objective to save humanity. You are connected to the prophethood of all the prophets who came to save humanity. Chain of prophets, one after one, one after one, one after one, and you are the followers. We learn from all of them, from Abraham, alayhi salam, Musa, Yusuf, Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him, all of them are prophets. You should look like them. You should act like them and we should follow them. That's why I'm banking on you. I'm relying on you heavily because I see the future in you and you can make it. You can make the difference because the difference between the one who want to make the difference and the others that the one who wants to make the difference is like you. It's connecting his mind huh, to his eye to make the vision. It's looking at the community. It's seeing the community. He does not or she does not look at the mirror to only see herself or himself. No. You always look at the people who are surrounding him or her. To see how good they are and how he will make or she will make them better. To bend our back to the community. We talk about orphans, we are all orphans. We talk about poor people, we are all poor people. You know how much wealth you have? You have nothing. You have nothing. Unless and until you realize or we realize what have we been created for? What, what, have, what have we been created for? If we don't realize that, we are poor people. No matter how much money you have in your bank account, you are surprised because you are poor. Poverty is not cash in pocket or cash in bank account. Poverty in the soul and the mind and the heart of the man and the woman is poverty. <coughs> poverty is selfishness. <coughs> poverty is getting away from the community, from the responsibility, from your family, from everyone. This is poverty. Poverty is ignorance when you stop learning. My message today to all of you, you don't only have the degree. It's not good enough for me. You don't only have to have the degree. But you have to excel when you get the degree. This is number one. We don't stop. And you have to keep excelling to learn. Keep learning and learning and, le and don't stop learning. If you want to be a change maker, don't ever stop learning. Not only learning for, for yourself, but learning to teach. Learning to educate. Learning to guide. Learning to save. Learning to establish. Learning to build. This is learning, this is the knowledge, and this is the education. You, young people, are my dream. And I have to see each and every one in this room become a different individual. Not because he speaks good English, or she speaks good English, or she has got, uh, what, what's your degree? Economics, anybody else? Anybody else? You? Medicine? Okay. Sisters are shy. Your degree? You've done it. Anybody else? Uh, computer, science. computer science. Anybody else? Automation. Automation. So you get rid of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. But how I can transfer such a knowledge to community? The message here is not to get a job. But the message here is to provide jobs for others. Not to save my life. To save the lives of others who can save my lives as well. You know when we started? In 1984. As I mentioned it, wherever I go, whenever I go to anyone and to everyone. We didn't have any money. 
We didn't have any strategy. We didn't have office. We didn't have big names. I was a medical student. And I have a good friend of mine who was doing his PhD in chemistry. We were, both of us, studying PhD. Or for the medics, it's called MD. We didn't have cars. Most of you have cars. We didn't have telephones. Most of you have telephones. We didn't have computers. Most of you have computers. All of you, not most of you. And most of you, all of you, have what we did not have 36 years ago. But we did it on foot. Taking the buses from a street to street, from an avenue to avenue, from a door to door. I used to go to knock the doors to distribute leaflets. Me, myself. Don't ever become arrogant because you are a university graduate and don't knock the door to distribute leaflets. And don't stop in the middle of the road to distribute leaflets. We did it. We did it on foot. I'm so proud to tell you and to remind myself that I was the first one to hold a donation box outside the mosque in 1985-86. I'm very proud of that. Stand outside to raise the fund, a penny to penny, a pound to pound. And she was used to be very, very happy if we have a few pounds, a few hundred pounds. This is the time when we manage to work without looking at the result. And the result is today with you. Could we have dreamt at that time, 1984, 85, or 86, to come to Dublin, 2019, to talk to generations like you? Never. We could be liars if we tell you that we were planning for it. But we were alcoholic, not we were alcoholic. <laughs> We said the truth, huh? <laughs> Workaholic, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> you got it? <laughs> you like it, huh? Alcoholic? Do I look like alcoholic? <laughs> Work, what, what do you call it? Workaholic. <laughs> Wallahi, we used to travel to Newcastle during the day and take the sleeping train back to Birmingham <coughs> to go to the work next day. And this is how it started. Now you have all the means which we did not have. You have everything, so you must do better and better and better than what you are doing. I know it's very difficult nowadays. It is Myanmar. It's Rohingya, it is Yagor, China, it's Syria, and Syria, it's Iraq, and Iraq, it's Yemen, and Yemen, it's Libya, and Libya, it is DRC, Democratic Republic of, of Congo, it's a very bad country. The people have been suffering badly. It's Chad. It's Niger, it's Mali, it's Western Sahara, but you can do it. Say we can. Yes, we can. You are sleeping. No, no, this. If I'm alcoholic, you have to be workaholic. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Make the difference. We can make the difference. You know what? My daughters and my sons, I've got millions of daughters and sons. Millions of you from one wife. Can you imagine? <laughs> so you can expect, if some of you marry me, she will have millions of children. <laughs> anyway, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. We can do it.
It's not a joke. It's not a joke at all. How can we feel when we are in the situation? One of the orphans that you sponsor in Ethiopia, her name is, I think, Amina. Her mother is Hayat. It's a true story. You see how privileged you are here. When she was young, about the age of four or five, she has been raped by one of her relatives. The mother knew, and she went to report it to the police. And the relative was related to her husband. The husband came and beat in here and threw all of them out of the house. Reality. Reality, homelessness is reality. Five children and young mother in Ethiopia. Then he married somebody else. Then he contracted HIV, AIDS. Then he became extremely sick. At his last days, you know who was nursing him? Looking after him? His wife, Hayat. And he died in her hand. She has five children. She has to look after them. She discovered that she had a breast cancer. Stage three. But she was very happy. And not actually being, looking miserable. I'm feeling sorry for her. And she was saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. She discovered that one of her sons had a brain tumor as well. So this woman of the five children is one of your women who are you sponsoring her in Ethiopia. We don't know how long we'll be living, but while she is living, she is happy of what she has of life. The young girl is excelling in school, advancing and achieving. Story like this is a part of reality. A part of reality for each and every one of us to say, thank you, God, but we need to bring this, what we have to share with them, with Hayat, with her children, with many women, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. This is your duty. This is our duty, and this is our collective duty, all together. Another young boy, you see, his mother, so this, this was from Ethiopia, that one from South Africa, bought him in a bottle, plastic bottle, you know, the big ones, and she threw him into the field, because she didn't want to get rid of him. And the one woman was passing by in the evening and heard some child screaming or crying. She went to pick him up. She ran to the hospital and they saved him. He has a stunted growth and he's very, very small with very deep chest problem because of what happened to him. His dream is to become an imam and to teach people how to be good to their family, to the community, to the neighborhood. He does not know who is his mother or who is his father. And he is one of our children. This is the reality. Do you want to share the feeling of the people or want to talk about the feeling of the people? Do you want to see the people as images or want to see the people as our family? This is different. Difference between somebody like me, look at the picture and say, oh my God, and somebody like you, left the issue of the people. <laughs> Every individual has a dream. Every individual has a feeling. Every individual would like to have a future. The children lost their legs, but they want to play football. They lost their eyesight but they want to become doctors. 
you should make their dream happen. We should make their dream happen. And this is the relationship between us and each and every one of them. Because they are our extended family. In life, look at them. Not as them. Look at us as the big us. They are members of my family. We started with 20 pence. And nobody could imagine what we have today. We have you. You are more, more valuable than the wealth of earth. You know that? I'm not saying it to call you a bluff. I'm saying it because I believe in it. You are more important to me than the wealth of earth. Because you'll be able to make the change. And you'll make it. Inshallah. If we managed 35 years ago or 36 years ago to start from nowhere, we are somewhere now. Where do you want to be in 25 years time? Each one of you has a dream. Do you have a dream? What is your dream? What's your dream? Stand up and tell me what's your dream. Don't have a dream? Come on, brother. Do you have a dream? Yes. I want somebody with a dream. Come on. Very good. Buy the McDonald's company. Very good. Any other dream? Yes? Come, come here next to me. Because I want to show them the next president of Libya. I'll tell them. Uh, so basically, so basically for the past six years, um, I was living in Libya and I've seen how life was rough there and I just looked left and right and I've seen how Libya wasn't in a good situation and the politics or the leaders aren't doing anything about it. So I said I'm going to come back to Ireland, I'm going to study law, I'm going to study political science, I'm going to give myself education and then go back there and become president of the country and fix it. So that was my question. You know what? You know what? No, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Can I become your prime minister? Yes, sir. Sure. <laughs> no, no, just. I got my second degree from Libya. I was studying in Benghazi. Shuhada Yanayr. 1999. 1967, inshallah. So, thank you. So, I love Libya. And I love every one of you. Any other dream? Any other dream? Come on, sister. A lawyer. <laughs> eh? A lawyer. Come on, here. <laughs> She's scared. You will be speaking to people as a lawyer. The, body, the people who do not, nobody can stop them talking are lawyers. Is that right? A lawyer. Anybody else? Anybody else? We want dreams. Very clear dream. Very clear dream, very clear dream. Yes? I can't hear you. Come on, come, come. Tell everybody what you want to be and what, how can you do it? Um, I want to be the first Prime Minister of Ireland. Um, I want to raise awareness on the genocide in Palestine and China in different places which have been neglected. Um, the racism and Islamophobia in Ireland. Um, yeah, vote for me. <laughs> vote for her. Thank you. Thank you. Any other dream? I'm not here to talk. I'm here to let you talk. Huh? What did they say? Okay, come on.
Assalamu alaikum. Um, basically, I want to be the reason Kurdistan becomes an independent state, inshallah. Any other dream? President of Bangladesh. <laughs> Come on. But the president of Bangladesh has to be a woman. Um, I'm sure everyone here likes fish, and we like to supply it. Um, Speaking Bengali. Uh, that means how are you? Um, hopefully, I can go back to Bangladesh and make a difference. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Was a dream? Come on. Come another dream. So now you, you bought McDonald's, you want to go, you want to buy Burger King or Starbucks? Come on. Because they want to see the new owner of McDonald's. The new owner of McDonald's. So I want to be a Mujahid. <laughs> I love this you, inshallah. Anyone else? Anyone else? Hey, 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 come on. Come on, come here. All I've heard that I'm not the best, but um, I would love to give back to my family. They carried me through everything, so I'd love to give back to them. That's your dream. To give back to my family. My okay. Thank you, guys. Take me with you. Somebody else was raising his hand? Oh, come on, come on. No, no. So my dream is to be a barrister, inshallah. So that's what my dream is. To do what with being barrister? To help people. To uh, help people in need. To help people who are struggling financially. And also to... Um, Represent people that are really, really like you know, um, that are really uh, struggling with their, uh, um, with their uh, stuff, like you know. Already you have training on your position anyway for the summer, so I'll handle that. Yeah. So that's the video. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to become the chief justice. Not just barrister, Chief Justice. Yeah, um, my dream is to become the richest person. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Because uh, you see, like, let's say Bill Gates or Elon, Elon Musk or all the other rich people, see, they have a lot of money, like billions and billions. Like, well, how much do they give to charity? A billion? 500 million? Like, their net worth is, uh, like Bill Gates and Elon Musk, both of them combined, you can buy the whole country, like, I don't know. Yeah, uh, not Russia, but like, like, uh, like, you can buy a small country, like, I don't know. They, like, like, any country. Yeah, uh, any country, like, they can buy that. So, and their net worth is, like, over 80 billion dollars. So, how much are they giving to charity? A few million, like. Why? So, if I'm the richest person, I can give, like, let's say, 90% of my network. Inshallah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's your dream? We have another dream here. Okay, anyone else? Come on. I'll tell you what's my dream. Woo! Salam alaikum. I'm very realistic about my dream. Um, I've been very privileged for the last 20 years to work with uh, people with autism in Ireland and I've seen a lot done for the guys with autism in this country. I've learned a lot. We can really do a lot for people with autism. Um, I come from a very, uh, kind of like not a rich country, a bit of a poor country. Um, when, uh, I'm not really used to this song. <laughs> When you were talking earlier, you mentioned something great, and you brought me back to my past. 
Um, up to the age of 16 or 17, I thought, you know, I thought that I was a, uh, a rich kid, you know, I thought that I was doing well, like, you know. Um, I bet you is that if you look through the week, you know, uh, how many chicken legs you've eaten, um, you know, you say to me a few legs, you know. I remember when I was 16, I thought that I was very privileged to eat chicken. Oh, you chicken. No, 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 my mother used to buy a chicken every Wednesday, all right? <laughs> And we used to eat chicken every day. So I thought that was great. And when I left home to go to college, I realized that some people eat chicken, meat, you know, like different types of meat every day. So I realized that, okay, I thought that I was a rich boy. Then going out to that world, I thought, no, I was not rich. But now I think I was a very rich man. But just to go back to the autism, my dream is to establish a house, a residential home, for four adults with autism. Where I come from, people are not really properly diagnosed with you know, autism, and when they do get a proper diagnosis, they don't really have the proper service to go to. I come from a very, very small little town, and I've kept my dream small, because I said, okay, if I can provide for the place where I've come from, that'd be a great achievement. So that's my dream, and pray for me, some stage I'll be able to achieve it. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Very clear, very clear dream. Anybody else before we close down? Anybody else? Yes, sister, come in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bismillah, mashallah. <laughs> Um, I want to find like new antibiotics to like find a cure for all the diseases that can't be cured today, and help like reduce the amount of deaths from illnesses that can't be cured. Very clear, concise. Anyone else? Because we're going to close now. Come on. Sudan, huh? Uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Oh, Ethiopia. Uh, I always think about refugees, IDPs, uh, asylum seekers. Can you say what IDPs means? IDPs are internally displaced people. There are currently, there are currently more than 70 million people displaced in the whole world. And most of them are IDPs. And before, uh, I was a teacher, and then I was uh, teaching uh, secondary school kids, and then I shifted into humanitarian work. I work in, in different countries, in the Horn of Africa mainly, mainly in Somalia, and then I was uh, involved in humanitarian work uh, for these groups I was telling. So my goal was uh, to help those displaced, those are vulnerable, those who can't find a proper home, proper education, proper school, who can't feed themselves, and I'm currently in pursuing a master's degree in refugee integration, and my goal is to continue helping them at a greater or more uh, role in especially uh, helping a lot of people, like uh, thousands. So uh, my goal is, and dream is always to help people that are less fortunate, that are vulnerable, or the, who can't have the means to help themselves. Thank you, thank you. So my dream, because somebody asked me what's my dream. I'm not going to say that I don't have a dream, I have a dream. Which I want you to do it, because I might not be able to do it. We want you to focus in building future leaders. Not talk, 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 but building future leaders. Invest in your family. Invest in your children. Invest in the future. Invest in science and technology. Invest in education. Invest in peace building. This is my dream. It's not difficult. One man can do it. 
Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم did it. Did it for humanity. And you can do it for humanity. This is our dream. Keep building leaders. Don't build walls. Quite often people raise funds for a mosque. But we don't raise funds for education or research. A mosque with an uneducated people would be dividing the community. But a mosque with educated people would be uniting the community. This is my dream. Learn to educate, learn to support, learn to guide, learn to save. Regarding orphans for today, I'm not going to ask you to make miracles. I am asking you, or we are going to ask you, to make a friend. A friend might cost two, three hundred pounds a year. It's like a burger every day. <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> or what, 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 do you, what do you sell? In, 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 huh? Big Mac. Big Mac. No, no, small Mac. <laughs> small Mac every day. You can imagine a bar of chocolate that you take every day could be a life saving, a life saving for a child in Africa or in Asia or Latin America or everywhere and anywhere. Imagine that. Put your foot in their shoes and see if this happened to me, what could I have been at that time? What my mother, if I had been born in this country, if I had been born to this mother, if I had been born to this father, what I could have been by now. So share what you have to the people who have nothing to share. And this is my dream, brothers and sisters. But, I am finishing now. But, at the end of the day, we can't live without having a dream. And we can't live, in, we can't live of having a role to play. We can't live and we can't afford to live on this planet without being leader. You got it? Leader. Leaders with my staring eye, my fearful eyes. Because we believe that we can do it. Jazakum Allah khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين